Okay, we're here today at the Canadian Air and Space Museum. I'm here with the curator, Paul Cabot. Paul, nice to meet you. Nice now, to meet Paul, you. Now, Paul, besides your biggest guest here, what is this museum based all about? This whole area used to be an Air Force base and the uh, Canadian government closed it down. They were looking for ideas of what they could do with the buildings and so uh, one of the ideas that was accepted was to uh, create a, an aerospace museum within one of the buildings. So um, we were given this building to work with and um, we created a, a non-for-profit organization uh, so it's been built up by volunteers basically our revenues are generated by us and then uh, and we're responsible for all the uh, the work that goes on in here all the restorations the building of the arrow um, and then we uh, acquire donations from people and um, just we bring them in here we set up the displays and we just do it all ourselves The Avro Arrow, it's, it's, it's more than just aviation. I mean, it, it spans, uh, and anybody who was in Toronto back in the 50s is aware of that project and the program and what the closing down of it did for the city. Uh, we often hear terms of brain drain and things like that that uh, politicians refer to, usually with doctors now. Mm -hmm. But back then, the, the shutting down of the Arrow program was probably one of the biggest Canadian brain drains um, at the time. Most people who have not stood beside this plane probably do not think that the Avro was this large of an interceptor bomber. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, uh, if they were building the same plane today, it would probably be substantially smaller. But um, it's, uh, it's a delta wing platform, so that uh, usually says that it's going to be a fairly large aircraft. And it is probably the largest fighter ever built in the free world. Why was it built in such a large size? For one, it contained two engines, and if you walk down there, you can see the, just the size of the engines, and uh, everything in it was big, because back then we didn't have transistors, so instead of having a little transistor that does, you know, that's this big that does the job, we had three or four tubes that were this big to do the job. The actual air conditioning system in this thing could produce 11 tons of ice a day. Wow. And it, it was huge, so it was just behind the cockpit, and it occupied a huge area. Fuel, these engines, Huge, huge gas guzzlers. There's 19 fuel tanks in this airplane. Wow. So, you know, and the thing is, is being in Canada, uh, once you leave a, uh, an Air Force base, you really don't have anywhere else to land. So that's the purpose of tw two engines. So, you know, if you lose one engine, you do have another one to get back on. And to that same philosophy is followed by the F-18s that we operate today. This Tiger Moth behind me was a real popular plane with trainers in World War II and RC builders as well. And there's also one called the Fokker D7. Didn't you say there were some other planes, Paul? Oh, well, there's all, all kinds of them. They're all, uh, they're all very popular. The World War I planes are very popular with a lot of the RC guys. So you've got uh, people building the Sopwith Camels, they're building Sopwith Snipes. Uh, Fokker triplanes, uh, the D7s that you were referring to. There's a, there's a whole slew of planes. They're easy to fly and they're easy to build. Well, Paul, thank you very much. We saw a great Avril Arrow, right? Beautiful Lancaster built a lot of many other planes in here. And we're at? We're at the Canadian Air and Space Museum in Downsview Park. Well, thanks a lot, Paul. Great seeing you. Great seeing all you folks. Take care. That's it for this week's show, folks. Next week's show, we're going to be going from coast to coast again. We're going to be visiting Newfoundland's Bay St. George RC Flyers. We're going to see Carl Buckhoover's Independence. Wait till you see this plane. And also some rock crawling from the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. See you then, folks.
RCTV, your radio-controlled authority, has been brought to you in part by Big Boys with Cool Toys, OffRoadRC.ca, Canada's premier RC site, and X10 Productions, capturing the outdoors one frame at a time. <laughs>